You've probably heard about the best time to sell or it's spring selling season. Is it real? And why does it matter to you as a buyer? Welcome to Your First Home Buyer Guide, the podcast for first home buyers who want to get it right. I'm Megan and that was Veronica. We're both buyers agents and probably old enough to be your mums. But that's a good thing because between us, we've got over 40 years experience and we are going to share with you bucket loads of stories about avoidable mistakes. Together, we're going to make sure that you get unbiased and real information that you can rely on so you can get where you want to be without missing a step. Now, we've got loads of great tips for you in this episode. And if you'd like more useful tools, head over to the website, homebuyeracademy.com.au. There you'll find free checklists that you can download, a free mini course on how to price a property and our where to buy workshop for only $39 priceless stuff really bargain but before we get into the interesting stuff in this week's episode here's the boring bit the disclaimer you of course know that nothing in this podcast is to be taken as personal advice we always recommend getting the advice of an expert in their field of expertise now we've done our very best to ensure that the content is correct at the time of recording but things change so check with the relevant government authority or your advisors to get the most up-to-date information. Today, we're talking about seasonality in the property industry. What is it? Where does it happen? And most importantly, does it even matter if you are a buyer and not a seller? But before we get into that, what is your special house this week, Megan? I'm guessing that I can (laughs) know. Wow, it's come along. It has. Look at that. So if you are watching this, we have carport out the front, some lovely detailing to match in with the gables of the property. So that's a triple gable Ashgrovian. The builder has an an on-team painter, so they're actually painting as they go around rather rather than it being the last thing. And I kind of like that because it looks so pretty as it's going along rather than waiting to see, oh, here's the big reveal at the end. I've kind of got some some little R moments as I drive past every afternoon. And yes, I do go to site every day and check on progress. I used to do that (laughs) too. I am. (laughs) After the builders had left, I'd go and do my little little site check. (laughs) They've got used to me getting there just before school pick up, you know, just just before three and, and how are we going? How are we progressing today? What were we expecting to happen? Okay, what's happening tomorrow? And they've got it down pat now. They they brief me within about four minutes and then they're back on the tools. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the fact, nice colour choice, by the way. It's sort of like a bluey grey and then a, like a dark blue detail. Is that in white? Is that what you've yeah, got? Yeah, it's actually Monument. Um, so it's very similar to oh. a colour scheme that I've done on, on a previous property. So the main colour is Dulux Tranquil Retreat, which is wow. kind of a light grey. And then the dark colour is um, Colourbond Monument and the trims are done in a vivid white. So very crisp, you know, nice sort of calm colours. And I can't wait to see the whole lot finished. How exciting. Tracking I've well. Got, I've got a monument in mind too, but mine's much more much more modern uh, use, of the, use of it. Yeah. Obviously, you've got a very pretty... Queensland weatherboard there. Traditional. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. yeah. All right, let's get into it. Seasonality. Yeah, you may have read articles talking about the spring selling season. That's the time of year that is traditionally thought of as the best time to sell. People are sort of coming out of winter, hibernation, the leaves are coming back on the trees, start and grow again, the flowers are starting to bloom, it doesn't look desolate, cold and like you just want to curl up in front of a fireplace. The sun is starting to shine a little stronger, but it's not too hot yet. So spring is, you know, sort of that in-between season. And in most locations, there's less rain. Mm-hmm. But is it true that it is the best time to sell? <laughs> <laughs> and look, there is seasonality in every state and territory of Australia, right? So there's a there's a general sort of seasonality to the property market, but there's also as you move, you know, from further south to further north. Obviously, as the temperature gets hotter in summer, there's more of an issue. Colder in winter, more of an issue. So I guess. Spring and autumn are more temperate in both, in all climates. Um, but there's this Look, in myth. Brisbane, we did not used to have a spring selling season until it was kind of created. 
Yes. Well, that's the thing. It is a myth, isn't it? <laughs> and it makes me laugh. And I go, anything that encourages vendors to sell, but to be quite frank, I mean, this is all aimed at first home buyers, not at owners who, who are planning on selling. But it selling has an them. impact. And I guess that's why we're talking about it, right? Absolutely. It has an impact because the yeah. reality is that spring is usually the time the property market takes a dive. <laughs> that's interesting. Now, <laughs> as a buyer, what the, what this could mean, and, and let's make the link here because it's kind of yep. important or else you're going to tune out, it could mean that there are more properties listed for sale during spring. Okay, so it, it might mean that there are more listings and that can often mean more choice for you. So that yes. could be a positive thing as a buyer. But is that necessarily a good thing? And and I guess that's what we want to unpack here, is it? isn't it? Because it, it is kind of good because there's more to choose from, but it often means there's a lot more buyers out there shopping for their new home or investment property at exactly the same time. True. So you've got this sort of influx of listings, perhaps some people that are going, oh, there's going to be more properties for sale in spring, so I'll jump in there and, and see if I can find it as well. Whether they make offers or not, well, that's a different thing. Well, that's the point, really, because, you know, if you remember back a few episodes ago, we talked about FOMO and FONGO. Um, and was it FOOP? You know, the reality is that buyers respond to urgency, right? And urgency is created by a lack of stock. When buyers see that there's lots to choose from, um, quite often they'll sit back in their haunches and go, oh, great, I don't have to panic. I don't have to jump in and make offers because I've got choice. This is easy. And so that's one of the reasons why in spring, often the clearance rate would, so I measure things by clearance rates in different areas of the city of uh, Australia might um, measure things measures. by days of, on market, how long mm. it takes to sell a property. And so number of certain, offers in, number in of, private yeah. treaty markets is a really big one. Yeah. So you will actually see that there'll be less offers in, in often in spring if there's more stock around. Certainly clearance, auction clearance rates will take a dive and days on markets can stretch out. So when there's more stock and even though there's more buyers, when those buyers feel like there's, oh, goody, goody, I have choice, I have time, the luxury, they that urgency comes out of it. So it's interesting just to be aware of this stuff. Yeah. So Again, goes back to, you know, reading between the headlines in, with, with media. Don't get caught mm. up in it. But but the reality is, you know, people are actually selling their homes and investment properties all the time. Yes. Sometimes they have absolutely no control over the timing. So, you know, they might get a new job in a different city or might lose their job and they actually need to downsize or, you know, bring, bring down their mortgage. Could be marriage, could be coupling up, could be divorce, baby of the way, death, grandparents moving to be closer to the kids. Yeah, these are all factors that could lead to a property being on the market unexpectedly, unplanned. Yeah. And then you've got the overall market conditions, which is sort of separate to seasonality. We're talking about, you know, the, the ebbs and flows in, in a typical year. But if it's a hot market, you know, people don't have any any qualms about putting their property on the market. You know, they'll put their property on the market quite yeah. easily, really, because they're confident they're going to get their price. But in a slower market like we've experienced, say, in 2022, you've got some agents that have even said to me that even divorce, even divorcing couples are delaying putting their property on the market so that the seasonality is... for a rebound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the seasonality has no play on that one. That's literally just people saying, oh, I don't have to sell. But generally speaking, you're right. People are going to list all the time. Even if there's less stock on the market, there's still stock. There's always properties available, whether or not they're right for you or not. I mean, you've got to be looking all the time. You can't just wait for spring. Absolutely. So whilst there might be more properties planned for spring release, the fact is that your dream home could actually pop up at any time. Absolutely. So if you're not ready and you're not keeping in touch with the agents in the area you're targeting, then you might just see a sold sign pop up on a property that you would have bought and deeply regret not being ready. So our tip, our tip here here you go, it's tip of the day, is to be educated, to be prepared and to be active in all seasons. Be the equator, you know, it's just hot all year round. It's not seasonal. You're not getting much variation in temperature there. You are the equator. <laughs> That's hilarious. And it is so true because, you know, you get those, particularly like in a slower market where buyers feel like, oh, you know, that, that once again, it's that sense of urgency. I don't need to rush because prices aren't rising or they're falling and I'm waiting for the bottom yeah. or whatever. And it's like, you know, often, yes, if that property comes on and they're not ready and there's going to be less competition for it in a slower market as well, right? 
Yeah. So so it's like I've seen it many, many times where people have suddenly gone they're in this panic. And so then you put yourself in this ridiculous situation. Whereas if you are ready and prepared and always scanning the market for what's right for you, you know, those buyers can get some really good opportunities. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're actively looking and talking to agents when you're financially ready, ready to buy, financially ready to buy, then you might just get to hear about spring listings before they actually go on the open market. Then boom, you know what you can spend. You've done it. You know how to do your due diligence. You're educated. You know how to work out what to pay. You know how to make an offer. You know how to manage your risks and also how to seal the deal. And and I think that's the thing that, you know, I really want to make sure that people are hearing here, Veronica, is don't worry about seasonality. It exists in some markets. It doesn't exist in some markets. Sometimes it's talked up. Sometimes it's talked down. But seasonality in and of itself is not anything that you should be either motivated by or demotivated by because things can come on the market at any time. It's about how ready you are. That's 100% right. So let's just talk through the year, typical year, in terms of how those seasons work, right? Because yeah, we just talked about The traditional year that doesn't exist anymore. No, no that <laughs> sort of doesn't, but, you know, sort of doesn't, but loosely does, depending on where you are. Because, like, I would tell you, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, for instance, very much auction-oriented areas. So when you have an auction campaign, the property needs to needs four weeks, basically, to, you know, the lead up, to get it on the market, the open houses, and then the auction. And so, of course, over Christmas, Christmas holidays, nobody actually wants to run an auction in those times because Everybody's the gone. lead up period is Everybody's so the messed, exactly, it's messed <laughs> up with public holidays and, and going to the beach and whatever. And so, that ends up being like a six to eight week period where there's almost nothing comes on the market, right? Very few new listings over that time in most locations, unless Absolutely. it is a holiday market. Now, we will put that little disclaimer in there because they're very heated markets then. Which then leads to the conversation being a bit more nuanced to say that every area has its seasonality. Yeah. You know, so the holiday markets will have their downtime, right, in between. And then they ramp up over the holidays because, let's face it, they don't want to miss out on the ice cream liquors, you know, that have gone for a holiday. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be lovely if <laughs> really? this is where we could live all the time? Maybe we should go and have a look at buying here. Let's get a timeshare. Because <laughs> um, life would be better if we only lived here in it. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> so Let's do the this... equations. How long? No, sorry. That's, that's yeah, practical. Don't... I'm being practical. <laughs> We're all in the holiday haze. You'll want a different life. So, so, but in a in an urban market, you will have that period of time when nothing new comes to the market. Now, Brisbane's not as auction-oriented as Sydney and Melbourne, and Adelaide isn't and Perth isn't either. What happens in Brisbane over the Christmas holidays? So we, we tend to not follow the seasons, especially because we don't have those really cold winters that people hibernate. So, uh, and you know, it's hot in summer and that just is how it is. It doesn't stop people going and buying houses. <laughs> what we tend to have is is influences of um, more school holiday periods. By and large, Brisbane clears out during the school holidays. People go. They don't no one really come likes being there. <laughs> they just live there because they have to, and then they leave well, whenever they can. Know, it's a good lifestyle. <laughs> it's good opportunities, but generally, you're going to go to the beaches somewhere, overseas destinations, all those sorts of things. So, so generally speaking, we are much more influenced by the school term, and and often you'll find, and in tracking when listings hit that are prepared, as opposed to just need to get on the market and get sold, so not prepared or planned versus not planned, they tend to more follow that 10-week, basically 10-week term of the, the full term year. And and then, of course, you have the those those blips that come in between the public holidays. So if there is an auction campaign or a launch of a property, you'll generally find that they won't fall on the public holidays, which tend to be more in the start of the year than the second half of the year in Queensland. So we have, we have this big influx or this big amount of, of public holidays that happens in the first half, and I think there's about one or two in the in the second half. So we're much more up here, influenced by school term, people, the, the exodus from the city as a result of public holidays and school holidays as well. And even within Sydney and Melbourne, I know there's certain areas that are much more family oriented. You know, if they're if you're selling to people, you know, big family homes, based, yeah. or if you sorry, if you're an agent selling to people. And that's the sort of stock that you have. 
the same thing happens. So that's like the se- there's seasons within seasons then, aren't they? Uh, so it's like around the school term. And also yep. Easter is a big one. And elections. So like you, certainly when you're looking at a, at a chart that shows Sydney, and I track this, so therefore I can sort of visualise this in my head, you can see listings numbers for auction, so auction listings. And because nobody wants their auction to fall on a, on a, they don't want their first weekend to be on like a public holiday or school holidays or anything like that. And they don't want their auction to be on school holidays or public holidays. And so you can see this zigzagging, you know, of the listings numbers of, you know, dies in the butt, you know, in, for, for <laughs> Easter. And it's back up again. You got a super Saturday the weekend before Easter. You know, it's just, it's sort of Clearing insane. Clearing the decks before Easter hits. <laughs> yeah, it's just nuts. And they do, they call it super Saturday in the papers. And that's a real test for the for the market to see whether on a super Saturday with over with 1,200 properties going to auction, what's the clearance rate going to be and all this sort of silliness that, that comes in. It's just like, oh God, this happens all the time. You know, it's just year in, year out. And it's just. But the problem is with buyers, this is why we have this episode on seasonality, is because as buyers, you're only looking in this sort of finite period of time when mm-hmm. you're looking. And so you don't get this big picture helicopter Usually within view a one year period. Hopefully, yeah. you're not looking over a, a two or three not. year period. So you're not going through multiple seasons or multiple parts of the, the all the cycles that are going, you know, that we're seeing in the 20 years that we've been in the industry. Yeah, like you may not in the southern states, for instance, winter, definitely we see a, a real reduction in, in listings levels. And that's because people think, oh, my garden doesn't look that great in winter. Yeah. You know, and if they're not facing north, if the rear of the house is not facing north, particularly if they are facing south, they're going to have, or the house is a bit dark, they are not going to want to list that property until it's, they, you know, spring has, brings more light basically and the garden looks better, right? So there's a, there's a, Valid reason for some people. Yeah. If that's the only reason that they're putting the property on the market in spring, I'd encourage you guys not to buy that type of property. That actually raises a really good point, Veronica, because what you can be charmed by the season if someone has mm. prepared their property for a season launch. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's that's something that we do probably need to tease out a little bit more. And that is, you know, if you're going into a property in winter and it's got a beautiful fireplace and it feels really cozy and warm and and, you know, they've, they've got it all feeling, you know, quite, you know, have a think about what's the climate like most of the time? How's it going to be in summer? <laughs> um, where does the sun move during winter, but also during summer? So, and similarly, you know, flip it over. And if you're looking at something in summer, have a really good think about how is this property going to perform and feel? And what is the comfort factor going to be like? And what is the heat? What are the heating qualities? And what's the insulation like? All those sorts of things in the opposite because the house is going to be presented at its best for the season oh, for that sure. it's put on the market for. There are so many tips and tricks. You know, if you Google how to present your house really well in, in autumn, you'll get a big list of experts <laughs> who will tell you how to do that. You know, you, you raking up the leaves and making sure it doesn't look like a whole lot of work. Like there's all these these ways, these little things that are done to present the house in the best way possible. And, and you as the buyer... Your job is to go, okay, so it feels really good in this season, but let me have a really good think about how it's going to feel in all these other seasons. And what is the predominant season in the area that you're looking in? You know, does it, do you really need a fireplace in cans? In, <laughs> probably not. It looks nice, but you know, don't, don't buy a house in winter with a fireplace thinking, gee, that's going to be lovely. So a, a real hint, like if, if you go and look at it on a rainy day or in the, on a really overcast winter's day and it's still, they don't need the lights on. That's a good one to go That's for. That's a great one. You know, because so many houses are actually dark and they, 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 the agent will walk through the house and put all the lights on quite often. And I like to go through and turn them all off. And <laughs> sometimes well, I have a bit of what the natural light is. Absolutely. Because you're not going to be living in your house with lights on all day. I would hazard you shouldn't. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it's a real problem if you need to. And, and I quite often laugh at, at agents that, just put them on out of habit and I turn them off and there's no difference. I'm like, why do you even do it? Like you should be showing <laughs> off the fact that this house does not need the lights on. But, you know, there are things, yeah, not to get lulled into that presentation thing because the thing is that most most these days a majority of owners will present the houses really well for sale their, or their apartments really Absolutely. well for sale. They're- Agents are clued up on how to present. And, you know, there's a whole industries that have that been built up over the last couple of decades that are all about presenting properties for sale and sort of countering the downside of whatever season they're going for, you need to be mindful. And likewise, a two-story house in in summer, 
right? Or if it's not being offered for sale in the middle of summer, how hot is upstairs going to be? Is it insulated? Does it have ceiling fans? Like, can you open the windows and get cross flow ventilation? But there's a whole bunch of things no. that will make a house really uncomfortable in one season um, that you probably aren't even thinking of or aware of when you're looking in a different season. Yeah, we've got these these wonderful Queenslanders, you know, uh, example behind me, that are really designed for hot weather. And they are so hard to heat. They they have yes. gaps. They've got, and, and, of course, we like this open plan style of living now. You have these vast open spaces. And, again, you know, winter might only last a short period of time and it may not be too cold. can be countered by putting a few pairs of, you know, warm clothes or put a jumper and some socks on. But these houses can be really difficult to heat. But in Brisbane, I wouldn't make a decision about how I can heat a house over a decision how I can cool ha- mm. air, natural airflow or cooling of, of the property if it doesn't have the natural airflow. And some rooms just don't get it, right? They just don't. So they need artificial cooling. Yeah. So I, I'd look more at that up here and then if needed, you know, add some heating elements to it. But if I was in Sydney, I'm a cold frog. I lived in Melbourne for two years and I was just frozen the entire time. I moved down into a fabulous Californian bungalow in Camberwell for six months. It didn't have central heating. It had a space heater in the dining room. And we moved our entire lounge room into that one room. And to leave that room, we'd put on our our overcoats and gloves. And it was like, who's cooking tonight? Because you're going out in that cold. <laughs> wow. Lasted six months. We were out of there, you know, straight out of Brisbane where it was where we were still swimming and into sleet and, and cold in, in April. So that that you know, just I just didn't understand how important that heating was. And I thought, mm. oh, that one heater will do the job and you know, it'll be fine. No, <laughs> it wasn't. Getting into central heating in, in Victoria was very important. Yeah. yeah, I look I remember when we were filming the show down there, we had quite a number of episodes um in Victoria and Tasmania too, for that matter. And and those are two climates that Heating is a real focus. Yeah. Sydney, it's funny because Sydney, anyone coming to Sydney from elsewhere says, you guys don't pay enough attention to heating. You think you've got this warm climate, but your winters are freaking freezing. <laughs> and it's, it's mainly because, yes, we do have generally speaking a good climate, but winters can get cold and a lot of our houses are not heated properly. Man, but it's not like Melbourne and where where if you don't have good heating, it's, it's bitterly, bitterly cold. Um, so these are important things to think about too, when you're buying somewhere where you're not currently living and quite a lot of our listeners write into us about how do we, you know, buy in one area when we're coming from somewhere else and, and familiarizing yourself with these, these, these differences. Yeah. It's a challenge, you know, and this is one of the things that you'd need to be very, very aware of. And, and also prevailing winds is a classic. So in Sydney, yeah. for instance, the prevailing wind in summer is a nor'easter, Right. And if you are in a sort of coastal area or in an apartment that's sort of near the water that's high up enough in the building, you can get furniture blown off your balcony in summer if you have the wrong furniture and if you have the, the on the wrong side of a building. And no one would imagine, I, I, when we were renovating some years ago, I rented this big townhouse down the bottom of Balmain, Balmain East. And it was, it had a lovely view, which is fantastic. And um, really enjoyed that. But you, in the summer, you couldn't have the doors open because it would literally blow glasses and plates off the dining table inside. Oh, wow. That's how strong wow. it was. Wow. There so you that's go. something only a local would know. Mm-hmm. And, or and if I'm you've a, lived in that sort of environment to know, exactly. to know what might happen. Yeah. 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 And I knew what happened in these apartments because I'd, I'd learnt that through, you know, years of real estate, but I didn't know it could happen on ground level. <laughs> Imagine that. It's just like a big gust of breeze comes in and takes your entire dinner party off the table. Like being in a wind tunnel. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. It's so strong. And it just and also the design of that property was particularly bad. So that's the other thing too. So if they were selling, you you would think the owner, if they had lived in that property, would know that. And right. they would decide not to sell in summer because they would know that that's a real weakness. And you're only going to discover that once you move in. Yes. So these these are real and time pitfalls. of day can be a really important one too because I know mm. a lot you know the the best time to show a property um, particularly up here when it gets hot during the day ten a.m. Oh and yeah, you have no idea how many agents just cram as many open houses as they possibly can around that nine ten a.m. so that people are in and out before the heat really hits. 
And so if the you, cool houses are, are open later, <laughs> if you might be able to do that or well shaded. Uh, mm-hmm. But but it's um, it, you're going at different times of day, so not even seasonality, just around the, the the different times of year. But times of day, of course, are really important too because you get that heat in the afternoon. Um, if you're you know a, a seaside suburb, you get those the weather changes dramatically in the afternoon versus the morning in most yes. seaside locations. And you need to really experience what that is like, not just go there a few times in the morning and think, oh, this is divine. You know, I can't, I can't wait to watch the sunrise. <laughs> You've got to get out there when that wind is howling in and say, can I live like this? And if I have to have those windows or doors shut at the front, how does the rest of the property feel when that happens? Yeah, it's so important to to be very aware of these things, but also like, we're going to go back to the central message of this episode, and that is being ready, right, and also not being hoodwinked by the choice of when a property is put on the market and the presentation of that property. You know, so thinking about seasonality in, in twofold. One is how, you know, a sort of savvy vendors or savvy agents are utilizing that to actually present a property at its best light and also recognizing it's not the only time like you know spring selling season is not the only time you're going to find a lot of property on the market or the right property on the market potentially as well yeah and if if you do this really well your friends who you know might be coming into spring selling season say uh, (laughs) your friends who are still hibernating during a cold winter will be absolutely in awe of you if you've managed to purchase during that hibernation season or even in autumn it doesn't matter you know they'll tell you how lucky you were but you know you 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 will know better you'll know that luck (laughs) happens when preparedness meets opportunity and you will be the person who has made sure that you're prepared and you're seeking out the opportunities when they're there. You're not just waiting for them at a certain time of year. So well done if you are that person who is prepared and ready at any time of year. Seasonality might exist, but you know that you don't have to wait till spring to become a homeowner. Absolutely. And this episode will be coming out in autumn. So you've got a good season and a half at yep. least to take advantage of what we've just talked about. <laughs> In this episode, we've covered a very small part of our 10-step online course for first-time buyers. If you would like to learn more about the process and how to buy without making a mistake, then head over to our website, www.homebuyeracademy.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss an episode. And if you like what you've heard today, please give us an iTunes review. Five stars would be wonderful. It will help others find us as well. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found this really useful. And if you have, please share the love with others who you know are in the same boat. We'll be back next week with some more priceless stuff.